What's going on guys, it is Tom and welcome back to a brand new video and a brand new episode of my F1 2017 career mode and we're here for round number 16 of my 2017 or you could say season 2 now or 2018 season technically for Japan and uh, in my opinion the best track on the game and the best track on the calendar. Uh, not my best track in terms of real life, in terms of my favourite, my favourite is Spa but on this game this is the track I most enjoy driving, this track is absolutely incredible and I'm very much looking forward to this race and I've been waiting for this one for a long time and I'm hungry to try and have a good performance here and um Trying to get a good result because obviously last time I'm in Malaysia, if you have missed the last episode, I do have to go check it out if you haven't done so already by clicking the card annotation in the top right hand corner of your screen. But um it was an absolutely incredible episode, really, really good result compared to season one, and I just shown the progress of the car overall, and um, I've seen a lot of comments from you guys in the last episode saying what I should do in, in regards to the future of this series, and um, a lot of you really do want me to stay with all in this, so um, I'll keep it in mind, I've got to say... I am uh, slightly more leaning towards staying with Force India than going to Mercedes now because I am actually noticing uh, small improvements with the car and I feel like with a little bit more work we could be there or thereabouts next season in the mix for the top four. So um, I think we will be ahead of Williams before the season ends because we're literally neck and neck with them in this current career mode in season two and I reckon once the winter goes by we get a few side upgrades in the car I think we'll be the fourth best team and the question is then to really close the gap to Red Bull. Ferrari and Mercedes which is not going to be easy because um, you see at the start of the next episode already um, I do go a little bit in depth with the uh, graph on screen and uh, how all the cars are stacked up with all the upgrades this season and I gotta say it's um, it's rather rather alarming how big the gap is from Williams to Red Bull so if next season we're going to try and compete at all then we've got a lot of work to do next year to really be in the upper echelons of the F1 world with this team so well, we've got some really we've got really putting the mileage putting the work next season to really try and get where we want to be but um, focusing on this practice session however a pretty good start to the weekend here getting mostly purple scores on all the practice programs and um, a very good start to the weekend getting a pretty good amount of resource points there and um, Straight after practice, we went back to the laptop and I, I switched out my components as usual. So obviously for practice, I always use component two, but then for qualifying in the race, I switch out to component three. And uh, once component three starts to get a little bit worn, then we're going to use component four for the rest of the season, which is the freshest one we have remaining. But um, moving into Saturday qualifying here at Suzuka is a lovely Saturday afternoon here. Absolutely perfect conditions for a qualifying session. And... Um, Putting the car to good use here actually, really really good run in the qualifying and uh, opening lap in the session is not too bad, a pretty good account of ourselves as we come across the line and there's PE3 there in between both of the Williams cars so not too bad there to kick things off in the qualifying session but we're now going to run a ball my second and best lap of the session now and uh, out of the final corner open up the DRS now and uh, basically into turn one as base, as late as break, uh, break as late as you dare nearly turn two pretty much you go flat out into one and then uh, down a couple of gears fifth slash fourth gear for turn two which is really the, the inverted commas number one as we now go into the S section here and here it's absolutely critical you get the perfect line and um, also use the curbs tactically to get the nose in into each corner and also avoid them respectfully like depending on each corner there's a certain way you want to hit the curbs to try and aid your line the best possible we're now going to Degna 1 pretty much flat out through there really really good commitment level then into Degna 2 third gear possibly fourth so far so good up on our delta by about three tenths there but um Degna 1 was pretty much flat out and it was absolutely incredible feeling when you got it all hooked up but now into the Kirby Ashi curve or the hairpin and a very good run so far very good traction out there and it's really, really important to get the traction out of that corner because there's a lot of straight here you've got to go through. Even though it's sort of like a curved straight, there's a lot of straight line speed involved before getting to Spoon, which is this corner here. Sixth gear down to fifth, and I keep it in fifth for the second part normally, but I miss my apex, so I have to go down to fourth by accident to try and get the nose in. But so far, so good, and we're still pretty, oh, pretty on a pretty good lap here compared to our first attempt. And... Um, we're in P9 at the moment and we're up on our delta, about a second off the pace in the middle sector here. Ricardo in front, Bottas behind, who's yet to improve a lap time. But here we go, into the final chicane here, third gear, really attacking the curbs here. Very good exit on the exit there, using the gears to our advantage, really trying to push the track limits. And uh, here we go, open up the DRS, tight line on the inside and across the line. And the question is, where is our lap going to put us by the end of the session? It's going to be P7, so... A pretty good lap there and a nice improvement and pretty much a best of the rest position here for qualifying. So a very solid result here on the Saturday, but it was the best of the rest. That's what I thought when I crossed the line. Ocon's P5, Massa is P6, Bottas is down in P10 with Ricardo in P9. So those two did not improve at all. And Esteban Ocon is the best of the rest, pulling out a worldly P5 with Hamilton on pole, Raikkonen in second, Sebastian Vettel on P3. 
and Max Verstappen in P4, but Ocon and Massa really put one out of the barrier there and qualify myself in P7. But we're now going to move into Sunday for the race. Right, so here we are then for race day at Suzuka, and it's P7 on the grid for us here today, and uh, my teammate Esteban Ocon is directly in front of me, so that's going to be the target today, and also try and beat the Williams to our right-hand side. So right now, you could say a P5 is on the cards. We do have a Mercedes behind us, who I'm expecting to charge through, a through the field this race, so somewhere around P6 is probably going to be the realistic finishing position today, but uh, I guess we'll have to see what our pace is like. I mean, we qualified much better than Malaysia, and in Malaysia we managed to get ourselves a P6, so... Um, that wasn't too bad, so I wonder if we can maybe repeat that here today and try and get a good result and uh, try and have a good race overall. So I'm looking forward to it in terms of the race strategy. It's a, it's a dry race throughout, sunny conditions expected, and we're going for the two-stop strategy here onto the soft time and then onto the super soft at the end. So um, I'm expecting most of the AI to follow me on that strategy. Also, fuel-wise, I've overfueled a little bit to try and be a little bit more aggressive with the fuel in terms of uh, being able to use the rich mix later on in the Grand Prix. But uh, other than that, that is going to be the race strategy for today and I'm very much looking forward to it. Hope you guys are too and if you are then please do slap a like on this video early on and let's try and jump into the race now and see how things pan out for round number 16 of the season for the Japanese Grand Prix. Right then here we go on the grid for Japan we're going to gear up to the five red lights lights out and away we go and it's a pretty okay start but uh I've had a pretty poor one compared to Ricardo's so that come off to an absolute screamer off the line there as we now going to turn on for the first time in this race you've got to be careful with our line and uh pickpocket our overtakes very nicely as we get up the inside of our teammate here just trying to sneak through Massa's off to a good start been squeezed out but uh, I'm still on the outside of my teammate now all over the back of Felipe Massa here have I got the grip to go around the outside of Massa not quite but uh, we've got past our teammate and that is a good start for us Massa up into P5 so uh, that's a very good way to kick things off here in this race and uh, now we've got basically see what our pace is like and see if we can keep pace with these guys Right, through on 30, I've got a little bit of a run on Massa here, I don't know if I'll be close enough, but I'm going to have a look on the brakes, can I get it? Oh, it's very close, just snuck my nose in there, but uh, Massa defends the position for now, but I'm going to be right on his tail as we go through the final corner here, literally pushing him through, and uh, we're just going to wait to make the move here. We're going to pull to the inside, but have we got enough straight line speed? Not quite, a little bit more slipstream, we're going to pull back to the inside. Have we got our nose alongside? Yes, we have just about up the inside at turn one. And there we go. A little bit deep though into turn two, which is going to allow Massa to switch back on me. And uh, that is not ideal. I need to make that move stick, basically, and uh, commit to that move. Because I think I've got the pace to at least catch the Red Bull in front. Um, the, Ferrari, the two Ferraris in the Mercedes of Hamilton is a little bit too far ahead. But uh, we could get as hard as P4 in this first scene if we just clear Massa here. So let's try and overtake him. Okay, I'm close again here, and uh, this lap DRS will be enabled, being really aggressive at the front of chicane. They're using all of the curbs, but now we're waiting for DRS to become enabled. But Massa's had a pretty good exit, actually, out of the chicane, and I don't think I'm going to get close enough here into turn one. I'm going to get very close with DRS, but not quite close enough, and we're going to have to just sit back for now and uh, wait for the move again here. But uh, Massa's starting to hold me up, and I really am getting a little bit anxious now to make the pass, because Ricardo's just up the road. I can see him there, and I want to try and pass him. Once again, I'm going to try the same move here. Can we get a better run, though, through the uh, final chicane? It's a little bit better than last lap, but Massa just gets such good drive out of there. And uh, I don't think I'm really close enough. I'm going to dip into the rich mixture to see if I can get any closer to him into turn one. Here, we've got a huge run, but uh, not quite enough here. And uh, we've just got to sit back for now, unfortunately. It's just frustrating, but uh, I know I'll get him eventually. Okay, we've got company now in the form of Valtteri Bottas here. And he just passed Ocon in the last lap, and now he's going to look up, making a pass on me into turn one here so let's leave him the room but he doesn't actually quite commit to the move on the inside there so we're going to stay ahead of Bottas for now but he's now trying to chase me down and that's a lie Massa to just get away slightly but Massa's really frustrating me this race as I can't make the move and uh, just give me dirty air. Right into the final chicane here I've uh, selected to box this lap and uh, Massa depending if he pits on I'm going to undercut him and he doesn't come in so I'm going to go for the undercut here so uh, let's push this pit entry a little bit be very aggressive and there we go that's absolutely perfect but we're going to come in for the undercut Bottas is in no sorry that's uh, Ricardo in the pit lane also so it's going to be a pit stop battle here and let's see if we're quick enough away here 2.9 and uh, is it quick enough yes it is we're still ahead of Ricardo and also Bottas so luckily that was very crucial but now we've got to push on this tyre and try and undercut uh, Felipe Massa who stayed out for one more lap. We're going to rejoin just behind this pack of three cars here, but we should be in relatively clean air. So, um, I don't think we'll catch these. We'll probably catch them right at the end of the lap, but I should have enough this lap to have clean air throughout and be able to push with these tyres. So, let's get pushing straight away here and let's see if we can undercut Felipe. Okay, through the hairpin, we're right on the back of this, these three cars already. So, I wasn't expecting to be these, this close to these guys already here, but we're going to use the slipstream to try and pass them and, uh, we should have the pace to get past Alonso here. I don't know if I'll have enough on the brakes, but uh, 
And they're now going to start holding us up through Spoon. And I've got Bottas all over my towel. So let's try and set ourselves up for a good exit here. And they use the rich mixture to try and pass Alonso before 130 if possible. So here we go. Also, I don't want Bottas to get my inside. Otherwise, that's going to really screw me up. So here we go. Pulling to the inside on Alonso. That's going to be a nice move into 130 Nice and easy. And also... A good run on Stoffel van Dorn here. I'm just going to use a little bit of the grass to try and get the inside line into the chicane. And there we go. Just going to close the door on him. And there we go. That's a nice little move. But uh, that's not the ideal undercut, to be honest. Because um, we encountered a bit of traffic that lap. So we're going to stay in rich mix. We've got to see where Masters. We've got a yellow flag in turn one. And uh, there's Felipe right there. Have we done enough? We're going to go around the outside of him there. A lovely little move. And that was very, very well thought out. Very nicely executed. And we're now past Felipe Massa here. So now we need to get past Pascal Verlan, who's uh, frustrating me already here. So let's try and go around the outside. Have I got enough just downfall? So I can't quite make the move. And uh, Verlan just frustrating me at the moment here. We're going to go up the hill now. I think a move into the hairpin is going to be the one the doctor ordered. Because uh, Massa is in the back of me now. So I've got to try and shake him off before he gets a run on me. You know, that Williams is still very fast in a straight line, so we've got to be very wary of that. But here we go. A nice run through there. I think Ericsson's got issues with his car, so we're going to go up the inside of the hairpin on Pascal Verlon. A little bit of second gear action there, and there we go. Nice move on the Sauber. Now we can pick up the slipstream on Marcus Ericsson and make the move on the other Sauber driver here. Can we get enough on a straight line? I don't think I can. I'm going to dip into the rich mix here. I'm going to go for the dive into this next corner into Spoon because he's got issues with his car, so I'd rather avoid him. And not have to battle too much with him. And there we go. We're now in clean air. So I'm going to stick it in rich. Leave it in rich, should I say. And uh, try and pull away from the guys behind. Now they, they're caught up in a little bit of traffic here. Well, Ocon's in the pit lane. He's exiting the pit lane about now. So it's going to be very close. But I think I'm just going to get ahead of my teammate here. And uh, rejoin ahead of me. He's going to rejoin crucially ahead of Massa. So he's managed to jump Felipe. And also overcut Valtteri Bottas there. So great strategy from Ocon by doing the overcut. And uh, managing to jump a couple of cars there. So we've both managed to make the uh, undercut and overcut work respectively so we've both gained a couple of places and uh, we now get the chance to pull away so that's exactly what I'm going to try and do now by using these tyres to the absolute maximum of their ability. Uh, Magnussen just comes into the pit lane we're catching up to a little train of cars here which does include some of the big boys but right now I've run out of rich mix and Ocon is going to go for the move on me here into turn one. Bottas is there but he can't seem to pass me and also he can't pass Massa or Ocon because we're all Mercedes power cars and we've all got superior straight line speed here but uh, we're going to stay ahead of Ocon for now but um, it's frustrating because I, I was pushing really hard and my pace was really good and I was actually st just stretching away from Ocon but the fact he just managed to stay within DRS every single lap now that I'm out of rich mix is um, that's not ideal because I was hoping to be basically out of his DRS when I was finished with Rich Mix, but uh, it hasn't really worked that way. And now I'm in standard. He's sort of, he's all, I can tell he's also in Rich Mix because his straight line speed is ridiculous compared to me in standard. So um, he's basically pushing quite hard now and he's dragging Masso and Bottas along with him. So we've got to try and uh, just continue pushing and trying to pull away. But we are catching this train of cars in front, which I'm hoping will give me a bit of a break. And hopefully I can use those guys to maybe catch a few of the up. The guys have the pack because I know Ricardo's in that pack somewhere, so there's a chance here. There's a lot of cars in there and a lot of points up for grabs. Okay, so we've got a slow moving Red Bull here, and it's Max Verstappen who's got an issue, and we're just going to slice past there. Massa's got a, uh, sorry, not Massa, Verstappen's got a rear left puncture, so luckily I spotted that. Just managed to slice past the pair of them, and that's going to give me another net position here. But we're up into P8 now, and uh, we are catching Palmer ahead, and still there's that train of cars just up the road who. You know, I wonder who that may include, but for now, it's looking pretty good for us. And uh, we're starting through these guys like a hot knife through butter now. And I hope Ocon hasn't had too many issues with that because he was doing pretty well behind me there. Doing a good job of just keeping Ocon, you know, at bay. And uh, just that one time where he tried to pass me, but um, the pace is good. It's just the fact I could tell he was enriched and he was so much faster in the straights that he was managing to keep up even though I was pulling away through the corners. So uh, now I've sort of cleared him and I'm by myself. I can now, once again, try and focus really hard on improving my pace and uh, see if we can try and keep up with Palmer here because my lap times aren't that bad I mean I'm only 6 tenths off this lap and uh, I was trying to avoid Verstappen as well so lap times are pretty good on these tyres okay Palmer comes in as do a few of the other cars that were in front of him so that's going to promote me now up into P5 so that's not too bad that's Vettel who's up the road there so he was held up in that traffic but uh, we're in P5 now I don't know if that's a net position or not but it's a really really good place to be in and uh, goes to show my paces race and also strategy. Everything's been perfect so far. And I've absolutely timed everything to an absolute T. We've still got coming for one more stop for Supersofts in about two laps time. So uh, that's going to be very exciting. So I'm looking forward to going onto that tyre. But uh, right now, I don't know if the person in front of Vettel is maybe a slower car for position. I don't know. But I feel like right now I'm, I should be in a net P4. But I'm not really sure at the moment. 
Okay, so that was a slower car in front. It was Carlos Sainz on the medium tyre. So he's coming for his final stop of the race. The issue is now, all these guys are just pit. I mean, they're coming for the last stop. So they're actually in a net position here with that one stop strategy on mediums. That is their net position. So I've got a push now on this overcut stint. Hope they get caught up in a little bit of traffic. And then if I have to pass any, it'll be on the last stint when I'm on the super soft tyres. So I need this in lap, sort of this up in the next one to be absolutely crucial and as best they can possibly be. Right, here we go then through the final chicane and now coming in for our final stop of the race on to another set of super soft compound tyres and let's try and be aggressive here but also being cautious at the same time trying to make sure that there is no major surprises and there we go we're going to go into the super soft compound tyres as will probably mostly everyone a two second pit stop wow that is huge that is an incredible stop someone's just retired for the race at the final corner i think or someone's going for a spin i'm not sure what's happened there but uh we're going to rejoin in p10 by the look of it and uh i think i can just about come out ahead of magnus in here i come out i get up to speed and i can i get ahead of magnus oh not quite right okay so we've got to do some overtaking in this final stint here so our p4 might not be so comfortable after all because we've got to overtake guys who were ahead of us in a net position in the first stint so uh Let's try and make a few moves here. And the first one is Magnussen. He seems to be struggling on that tyre. And uh, he's been on that for a while now. That tyre's going to be pretty worn. Because he pit. We saw him pit the first time round. So he'd probably come in this up for another set of super soft compound tyres. So let's try and make the pass on K-Mag here. Right, I think it's going to be a nice little lunge into the hairpin on the brakes. I've got the fresh rubber on. And it's working beautifully for me. There we go. Lovely little pass on the inside. I'm going to leave him the room on the outside just about. A little squeeze just to let him know that. I'm getting this position from him, and there we go, we're up in the P10 now, let's try and push on here. Right, Bottas and Ocon in the pit lane, so we're going to once again re-overtake them, but uh, we've got a little train of cars in, and we've got to try and pass, I think, pretty much everybody, so we've got to work out in this final stint here. Okay, I've co-op to Palmer, but he's very fast in a straight line, as the Renault has been all season, so I've got to try and pass him in the corner somewhere and try and surprise him, and I think the corner is going to be the hairpin, so... Uh, Let's see if we can set him up for a move here. Nice run through Degna 2. And I think it's going to be a nice little dive on the brakes here. Just how we did on Magnuson, to be honest. And here we go. Kobayashi curve. Kobayashi S dive up the inside. Nice bit of traction on the exit. Can we just get it in front? There we go. Right. So we're past Palmer now. Let's get our foot down. That runner is fast in a straight line. So we've got to try and defend for a little bit here. And then once we get into the S section, we'll be okay. But right now, Kvyat is next. Okay, so as we come across the line with three laps to go, you can see the three cars in front of me on the minimap. The three cars we have to pass with the three remaining laps here. So we've got to work out. The tyres are not getting any newer. So uh, we're going to have to really try and dig deep here to try and get past all three of these guys. Or at least the two that are directly in front of me. I have to get past these two to really get a good points position today. Grosjean out of the Japanese Grand Prix. They're just retiring, I think, through the S section. I just saw a brief flash of yellow, but uh, there's not going to be no safety car now. So we've just got to focus on what's ahead of us now. Okay, I'm within Kvyat's DRS now, and he's within the DRS of Lance Stroll in front, so let's try and time this pass to perfection and try and get a nice double overtake. Here we go, into turn one and turn two. It's going to have to be through the corners. Once again, that's the place where I seem to be most effective, and the hairpin is looking like the favourable choice at the moment. So let's see if we have any tyres left as we get really close to Kvyat through here, and maybe set him up for a move into the hairpin. Okay, I don't think I'm close enough to make a pop here. I'm going to have to go really brave on the brakes, but I just don't think I can make it because also my tyres are not as fresh as they once were. So let's just try and set ourselves up for a move elsewhere on Kvyat. I think I can maybe get him on the back straight into 130R because I've got the straight line speed in the tour also. Okay, he actually pulled away from me on the back straight there. So maybe into turn one now into the last up of the Grand Prix with DRS. This is his last chance saloon here. So we've got to make this count. We're going to go up into the rich mix. And also push it really hard here. But he's got DRS on Stroll, which isn't ideal. So we're going to just sit behind him for now. But we are going to make the move. Well, that was very close. Could be out breaking very early there. But uh, I think I'm going to pass him right now through to S's, I think, if I get the good one. Because I'm very close to him. So here we go. Let's try and set ourselves up for the move. I think it's going to be around the outside of this one here. If I can just get the traction. No, I can't. I'm just running out of tyres, which, isn't, which is, isn't ideal. Because I do depend on the tyres quite a lot around here. In terms of really making those sort of bold moves. And... Uh, I haven't got the tyres left. Okay, I don't know if I'll pass both of these guys, but I'm going to pass Kvyat. I know I am, because I really want to pass him badly here. So let's try and play this very smartly and uh, try and maybe set myself up for a cheeky little move into the final chicane here. Come on, let's try and get a good exit out of here. I'm not that close. I'm going to have to dip into the rich mix here, and I'm going to use everything that I have left to try and get close enough to him. He's getting a slipstream on Lance Stroll, which doesn't help, but here we go. We are gaining on Kvyat here. And this is going to be the one. We are close enough, so I'm going to go for the pop on the brakes into the final chicane on the last lap. Up the inside of Kvyat, squeeze him out, just close the door on him there. 
and there we go. The move is done and wrapping the P6. Disappointing because it could have been P4 this race, but I'll take it anyway. And uh, that was a very enjoyable Japanese Grand Prix. And the one-stoppers on the medium tyre really pulling out a, um, a ballsy strategy. And that was Bottas as well. So he was on the charge in the closing stages. Luckily, he wasn't close enough to make a move on me there. But uh, a very enjoyable race here at Japan. And... Um, Overall, I think Ocon would have got a good result as well, a couple of good points. So I think it's a double points finish for the team as a whole, which is good. And Hamilton wins, so um, he sort of uh, stops Raikkonen in his tracks and uh, just letting him know that he's still there. But I'm pretty sure Raikkonen finished his second place anyway. So, um, wow. Hamilton's really fast and good form this season. I've got to say, he's won quite a few races this year, but the ones he hasn't won, he's been pretty poor in. So, um, Hamilton's been a bit more inconsistent than Raikkonen. Raikkonen's just always there when he needs to be. But as you can see, there we are, P6. Pretty good race overall. I mean, we started from P7, so I guess we gained the place, so that's not too bad. And we beat the objective of finishing a P9, and we beat our teammates. So, um, a much better race than Malaysia, where we got pipped in the end bar on the last couple of laps. But uh, overall, that was a very enjoyable Japanese Grand Prix and some well-deserved points. But uh, other than that, we're now going to move into the final race results, drivers and constructors standings, to see how everything shapes up after that pretty frantic and enjoyable race. And looking at the final race results, you can see that Hamilton wins at Japan ahead of Kimi Raikkonen with Vettel rounding up the podium. Carlos Sainz in an incredible fourth place ahead of Lance Stroll, also an incredible fifth place for him. Myself in P6 there, gaining a place from the start. Valtteri Bottas in P8, just behind Danny Kvyat, also recovering from P11 on the grid. And Jolien Palmer also in the points from P14. Ocon drops from 5th to 10th, so a big drop for him there. Also Magnussen, Ricardo, and Massa dropping through the order there, but... um. A race full of recoveries here today with Verstappen way down in P18 and Grosjean DNFing from the race. And uh, that's pretty much it as we look at now the uh, driver's standings after that race. As you can see, we hold P7, Sainz overtakes Hulkenberg and Stroll overtakes Daniel Kvyat. But um, Massa now 30 points ahead of Esteban Ocon and uh, I'm pretty much 40 points ahead of Felipe. So right now we're only 3 points ahead of Ricardo. Sorry, behind Ricardo. And Ricardo once again, another race where he picks up no points. The third one in a row for him now. So could we possibly just split the Red Bulls? here by the end of the season we'll have to wait and see but Raikkonen 65 points clear at the top of the pile ahead of his teammate and uh, Hamilton breathing down Vettel's neck to be fair for that second place position Valtteri Bottas I believe now officially out of running for the championship or at least about to be by two points I can't really make the mental math right now but um, it's there or thereabouts but looking at the driver standings finally you can see that we're holding fourth place quite comfortably ahead of Williams there and about 100 points behind Red Bull and uh, that's pretty much there as Ferrari pretty much have wrapped up the constructors I, I believe they can win it in the next race so um we're now going to move into the laptop and see how things shape up after that race. Right, so for the second race running, we've had a little update to the core competency progress there by getting an update and improve my first driver bonus. That's pretty damn good. We now got a classic event that we've got to take to the track, and uh, I think I'm going to go for the um, I think the pursuit around Britain, the RB10. So let's jump into that now and see how that goes. Right, so we've got to overtake the slower cars who will have a head start and it's wet conditions actually so uh, this will be very interesting to drive this car around here but uh, we've got to pass these cars in front of us and basically win the race in these three laps. So here we go then, getting ready for the five red lights. McAllister's going to go on his way and uh, we're going to be on the way right about now so let's get the hammer down and let's try and see if we can pass all of these guys in these uh, tricky conditions here in the RB10. Right, here we go on the back of McAllister. I just realised I said the RB10 when it's the RB6 from 2010 but let's try and make a move here on this old Williams I believe we're on slick tires actually uh, I actually never know because it's got too many grooves so I'm trying I'm thinking I'm thinking we're on the old groove tires but I've just seen there's five cuts in the tire so that's obviously not um, a dry tire but uh, rubbing the fourth place now let's try and chase down sorry it's no longer sorry it's actually Kaufman who we got to pass because uh, sorry's overtaken him in the uh, pretty damn quick 98 McLaren here we go we've got the run on the 96 Williams I'm just going to pull to the inside and make a nice easy move into the first corner. And now we can try and go after Sari. The back end snaps out of me there. And that is a big, big moment there. And uh, that might make the difference between us winning this challenge or losing it. Okay, I might just do this here. sorry has been held up by the 98 or 91 uh, McLaren MP4, MP4-6. We're just going to go up the inside. It's the 8, 1988 McLaren here. We're just going to go up the inside of the pair of them. And there we go. It's taking first place. And we're actually going to win another classic event. That's the second one in a row we've actually won now. So, uh, who knows? Maybe now we might be on a winning streak when it comes to the classic events. But uh, that's another one won. And one more victory in a classic event. Or one more just taking part in a classic event. And we would have unlocked the next core competency progress upgrade. But, um... 
Other than that, guys, we're going to wrap things up here for this episode. And hopefully you have enjoyed. If you have, then please do smash the like button. Also, if you're new around here, subscribe to my channel and check out these videos on screen if you haven't done so already. And also check out GT Omega in the link down below. Use the code TOM97 for a cheeky 5% discount. And uh, you'll get any of the items you can see on screen right now. But other than that, guys, I thank you ever so much for watching. And I'll see you in my next video very soon. Goodbye.